that um, he was accused of, you know, the, the, starting to become very egocentric. You know, the, the lyrics were starting to become very egocentric, and that's that's when the press was starting to sort of pick on him, and and you know, he was losing the plot. I loved the way. Mark had had a lull in his career, which is always good for everybody, and not so much to bounce back. You know, he did a thing of suddenly he weighed 13 stone, and then he, he thought, I've, I'm writing again, I've cut out whatever I was doing to make me become a fat bastard. And uh, he launched himself and he looked totally beautiful. Well, the way Mark presented himself visually evolved. You know, and there was even at one point the fat Elvis period, you know, too many feather bows, you know, and just too much, too much, you know. He did have a kind of um, integrity factor, I would call it, you know, that he wanted things to be credible. You know, maybe he felt that they weren't anymore, I don't know. I think it might have been difficult if you were involved with Mark early on. You know, and that was the way you saw him going. Beep and Mark created a monster. Keith Oldham had to try and control the monster. He was always upset when he didn't make, if he didn't make number one, you know, but I mean, at the same time, I mean, in his mind, he would concoct a situation where he had done, you know. If it was top 10, it'd become top three. If it was top 30, it was definitely in the top 20, you know. <laughs> and after a while, he would believe in his own publicity, you know. I would be privy to the uh, record sales and if we sold 20,000 records he would phone me maybe later in that day and said we sold 35,000 records that day. So I got used to this, everyone got used to Mark just doubling the figures, lying about everything, but it, as I said it was really harmless lies, it wasn't, you know, didn't hurt anybody. There was one occasion when we had to go to his house in the King's Road and I said, Mark, can we come around and discuss this tour situation, you know, the dates and what we're going to do, you know, for... He said, yeah, yeah, you can come, but it's impossible this morning. I said, why, what's wrong? He said, fans, there's, there's, there's hundreds of fans outside, they're besieging the house. So I said, okay, I got there, there wasn't a fan in sight. Just Mark with the door open. I said, well, where are they? He said, oh, they're all hiding below the bridge, by the railway line, and there's nobody there. Very good, whatever happened to the Teenage Dream. Such a good record, you know, and such a brave record. Because it had gone a little bit wobbly. Obviously an, an autobiographical song, and um, rather strangely I, I remember that there were three songs out at the same time, all with Teenage in the title. Alice Cooper's Teenage Lament, Mark's Teenage Dream, and The Sweet with Teenage Rampage. And, um, you know, sort of obviously at the time I would never have admitted um, that, that in actuality, if I'm really honest, of the three songs, the, the best of the three is actually The Sweet Teenage Rampage. <laughs> Probably, I, I think, because of the fact that, that that's what teenagers want to do, really, isn't it? They want to rampage. I spoke to Mark about taking a year off because the um, single Truck on Tyke I don't know, it, it peaked at number 20 or something like that. The writing was on the wall. We had to, we had to reinvent. And um, he protested and said, no, 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 no. We have to do one more album for the, for the kids. And he had this illusion that the kids were static, that they remained the same, that they didn't grow up. And, um, but yet, you know, reality was telling us otherwise. This was him uh, again, just you know, just tickling the chin of, uh, of uh, 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 the the undercurrent of the the 
the mothers and fathers and the adults and just having a bit of fun on there uh, and I think uh, um, you know it has it has a, a really oldie world feel to me as well, you know, it, it has a lot of stuff going on in there. Um, a, a, a lyrically, like I say, it's not explicit or anything like that, but it's, it's you know, it's verging on that sort of, uh, that fun side, uh, a little bit of the risky and stuff like that. Um, just a, a, a good fun, a good fun piece, I think. There's this kind of strange British take on rock and roll. If you weren't in on the joke that it was kind of spoofing early British rock and roll, like Cliff Richard and uh, the sort of uh, the Burt Whedons and the Billy Furies and that kind of... If you didn't quite get that joke, then I don't think it meant an awful lot. I think Mark was, was definitely by that time, you know, he was starting to wonder, you know, whatever happened to the teenage dream because he was the teenage dream and he was no longer getting to number one and I don't think he knew why, you know, I don't think he'd, he, he could sort of, he'd worked out how to reverse that. It just started to become a little bit of a mush to me then, it's just like they, they're not like, you know, Telegram Sam and they're not like Metal Guru, they're not like Children of the Revolution, they're not like Rider White Swan, this, those classic, it's, I just feel struggling, I always, you know, you like them but sometimes you need more time to like them than you would the others. So maybe that's a good thing, maybe that's a bad thing. No, I'm not having it. This is where I end my relationship with T-Rex. It's all over. Uh, but you've got to remember, this is a band who've had 40 million bloody sales of records so far. Four number ones, three number two, two number threes, and one number four. And you know what? It's sort of forwards and then backwards. There were so many things that Mark Bolan and T-Rex made in the 70s and their music, certainly the early stuff that came out on the Electric Warrior album, for me that just summarises the 70s. You listen to that, that's early 70s, that's glam, it's got that distinctive stamp on it. <laughs>